Hello, my name is Vesa Juvonen, and in this video, we will have a closer look on a new SharePoint, a new capability which we introduced in the SharePoint 2013 SP1, the client side uh, object model. Um, and the capability is the, the, the support for adding the content type ID for newly created content types. So, starting from this uh, SP1 uh, client side object model version, we're able to create content types with a specific ID remotely against your on premises or Office 365 deployment. And that doesn't necessarily sound like a major deal, but it's actually pretty significant improvement for a remote provisioning pattern. So now we're able to actually provision site collection and sites uh, from Windows, Azure, or any other platforms against the Office, uh, the SharePoint, and then you're able to make sure that the, the sites and site collection have the right content types and document templates and all of that uh, information architecture hierarchy uh, without the need of feature framework elements, without the need of content type hub, uh, which doesn't always work in every single scenario. So pretty significant improvement. Uh, and this demonstra this uh, simple example just shows how we can actually do that. Uh, in this particular case, we built a, a small console application. Um, console application, uh, which we uh, have now referenced those client-side object model uh, uh, DLLs, which is the uh, Microsoft SharePoint client and Microsoft SharePoint client runtime. So you need to have a references on those to make things actually work. The one thing what I wanted to quickly show is the location. So when I installed the, the latest version of the client-side object model, and just repeating myself, this is a new version of the client-side object model APIs as well. So I need to go and download the latest version uh, from the Microsoft download site. Uh, they will be installed on the C program files, common files, Microsoft uh, shared web server extension 15 is a folder within your dev environment. So in my particular case, I'm running Windows 8.1 uh, and Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio 2013. Um, and this, so this will be installed in my uh, Windows uh, 8.1 uh, laptop. And the one thing what you probably want to double check also is that you are actually running that right version, which is the SP1 version, if you're having any, any challenges. So the right version is 15.0.4569.1000. So this is the SharePoint, one, uh, SharePoint 2013 SP1 version of the client-side APIs, which is then having this new capability supported. And this is a pretty simple console application uh, just to demonstrate the capability. Uh, and let's actually run it uh, so we're able to see what's going to actually happen. Uh, so it's asking first first uh, the, the URL. So let's actually give that URL. I'm using one of my uh, dev tenants, uh, if I can remember the name correctly or write it correctly, that's always really useful as well. So, uh, you are not sharepoint.com slash site slash test, and that seems to be correct. And I'm using my own identity to log in. And then let's actually add the password hopefully properly on the on the UI. And we have a breakpoint waiting on the console application a code, so we're able to walk through the things. Because I'm a, uh, uh, authenticating against Office 365, I'm using the SharePoint online credentials, which is taking care of all of that additional hassle uh, when you're looking against Office 365. So pretty straightforward, and I can pretty easily uh, operate against Office 365 from console application or from uh, any other uh, location as well using that nice uh, nicely added API which is available in, in SharePoint 2013 R10 version. Um, and how do we create that new content type? Well, we create that using uh, the new content type creation information, like within the old versions. Uh, but then uh, the thing what we have added in the SP1 is the capability of us actually adding the ID. And in this particular case, I'm inheriting this content type from the out of the box document content type ID. Uh, the 0x0101 uh, is the out of the box content type identifier. I'm putting 00, zero and then a, a full good without the dashes as the identifier. And uh, the content type uh, name will be Contoso files, and I'm adding that to the Contoso group uh, settings. I could build whatever uh, hierarchy uh, is needed and, and manipulate the fields and so on, but that's something which we could have been doing already in, in the RTM version. Uh, and then our uh, tool is, is telling us that the new content type has been created successfully, press any key to continue. So at this point, we are able to now go to our site and refresh uh, the page. 
So let's actually go and, and refresh uh, the page so we're able to see that new content type to be available. And in this particular case, we were creating a Contos uh, file content type. So let's actually uh, open that one up. Uh, and then uh, let's have a look on that one. So we're able to now see uh, that it's it's contours of file, it's inherited from the document. Uh, you don't actually see the ID directly uh, within this uh, UI, but you're able to see the unique ID uh, from, the, from the URL. So if we peek on the URL, there's the 0, uh, x01, uh, the big, 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 big uh, identifier, which is, the, oop, which is the unique identifier of the of the content type, uh, and if we compare that uh, to what we actually did in the Visual Studio, we are then able to see that everything is matching, and we are able to create a content type using that specific ID, uh, and this way we are able to then create same content types across multiple site collections, which are using the same identifier across our whole deployment in the cloud, or it might be a hybrid deployment, partly in cloud, partly in on-prem. So really, really powerful functionality and, as part of, uh, and now available as part of the SP1 uh, update on the client-side object model. Thanks for your time.